And welcome to the status report highlight for the 17th of July 2018. This week we are moving to push our first content update to the public stress test branch. To start today's report off, Eugene is going to talk us through the remaining issues of the week as well as the past challenges. And then we will hear a few words from the animation, sound and map design leads. So without hanging a bet, let's kick straight off with lead producer Eugene on the new content and features for 0.63. I'm happy to say that we are no longer tracking any major gameplay issues with the upcoming 0.63 update that were assigned a priority of blocker or critical. There is a number of issues being tracked and on schedule to get fixed, but most, if not almost all of them, can be described as visual glitches. As of now, the patch is scheduled for a large internal playtest tomorrow, and if we don't run into any more issues, we will release the update on the stress test branch. One thing we're quite excited about is not only the features that we're bringing back, but also the huge number of bugs that have been fixed. All this together should bring a lot more stable and interesting DayZ experience. As we're seeing the comeback of the unconscious state, as well as everyone's favourites, the M4A1 and Mosin, alongside numerous scopes. That's what we've been waiting for. We will consider using a specialised mission for testing these, probably switching back and forth from the regular survival gameplay to a more action-packed combat scenario. Now let's move on to lead designer Peter, who mentions long-range combat has always been a staple of DayZ, and you can count on the fact that it will be in the future as well. The focus is to bring back scopes for firearms currently in the game and those which are coming. Switching between iron sights and scopes, the new implementation introduced the ability to use iron sights along with scoped view. Of course, that's possible only when a given firearm and scope combination allows it, and if you're curious, we are not planning to do slanted sights for now. Revision of scopes. Re-implementation of scopes is also a good opportunity for us to revisit individual scope models as well as their configuration, especially their camera positions, reticles, magnification levels and zeroing ranges. For some of them, it's needed anyways. For example, the PSO-1 can be used along iron sights and is being turned into a 3D scope now instead of just a 2D texture. This change alone requires a removal of the eyepiece to avoid the first-person camera clipping and will allow for an in-scope view as large as possible. We don't have a picture-in-picture -picture rendering, so we're looking into adding some post-processing such as depth of field, sphere distortion and colour tints to make scopes more visually pleasing. Peter believes that scopes will now be easier and more fun to use. Peter totally didn't just hype me up even more for scopes coming back. Now let's move on to lead animator Victor who says the animation team has been quite busy over the past two weeks, creating some completely new animations and improving existing ones. Let's take a look. New usage animations for items like shovel, pickaxe or hoe. These should provide more variety in animations and a better representation of each item in general. Improved holding of items emitting light. We have added a new animation instance and a new set of animations, walking, running, holding for flashlight, torch and flare. Players are now able to have the light in a better position. Animations related to vehicles. We are testing and finding the best way of adding animations for changing gears, starting the engine and other related actions. Improvements to existing animations and systems. We created a new animation for when the player gets hit and added more unconscious variations for different items and stances. Additionally, we polished attacking animations and fixed some bugs related to firearm animations. We've also made a bunch of new holding poses for various items, so your character can now hold items in a visually more pleasing way. Now let's move on to map designer Adam, who mentions over the past weeks I have squashed literally thousands of issues. Major issues like getting stuck somewhere, problems with swimming, ladders, but also minor ones such as frequent object clipping. Adam is certainly not done yet and plans to continue this bug bash in the upcoming weeks before returning to the general map updates. For example, we have got buildings like the city police station to add to major towns. Though there is one more thing that Adam would like to mention, as it is kind of tied with the topic bug fixing everyone knows and loves, the all Cyrillic directional and settlement signs. Did anyone say Kami Wobo? For a very long time, a number of settlements, railway stations and road intersections in the new, non-armor 2 parts of Chernerus were completely missing these features. As a part of this bug fix pass, we have re-added them, along with fixing many issues with the existing signs. These changes, along with the already mentioned bug fix pass, or at least a part of it, will be available in the content patch number one. And finally, sound designer Philip. The last couple of weeks brought a number of updates from the audio department. 
we don't have any samples for you, ah, but most of the things should make their way into the game soon enough. Let's go over a couple of examples. Female characters' voice support has been added. Some new character sounds have been added. Hacking down trees, cutting bark off a tree, digging, mining for stones, cooking, boiling, baking, drying. Thunderstorms were improved to capture the atmosphere of DayZ just right. I like me some loud juicy thunder. For the upcoming new features and content for the experimental branch, we've mostly contributed in terms of weapon sounds. A sonic crack of bullets has been improved. Impact sounds of bullets has been improved. Mosin and M4 sounds have seen some updates. We have a brand new set of reloading sounds for each weapon. We've managed to fix a bug with weapon reload sounds while on the move. And that is all for this week's Status Report highlight for the 17th of July, 2018. Are you looking forward to this first content update for 0.63? I know I sure as hell am. As always, don't forget to check out the community spotlight at the bottom of the Status Report. Read the Status Report in full yourselves for all of its juicy information, as this is a highlight. Don't forget to hit that like button, and thank you for subscribing. I'll see you peeps next time.